The Sam Livecast is brought to you by Fixers Living. Check them out on the internet at fixersliving.com or love them on the Facebook. Facebook.com forward slash Fixers Living. Kitchen, bath, outdoor, joy. That's what they do. Everybody, welcome to the Sam Livecast. It's the end of dessert week. Yeah, I'm here. Max is there. Allie's there. Hello, Everybody happy? I'm here. We're happy. Nice. I see dogs. How could you not be? Ha- I know. And How dogs, could you not yeah. be happy on Donut Week, though? Well, that's true. Right. I mean, I just Come call on. it. I, perhaps it was a misnomer. I called there it we Dessert go. Week. Sorry, Dessert Week. But right, no, that's what we're using today. Mm-hmm. And somebody wrote the other day after watching, I think the hot butter donuts. Yeah. And the guy said, oh, wait, wait, I can find this. I know how. I have the technology now. (laughs) And he said, wait for it. Ah, Shit, it's going to take too long. He goes, hey, great, using uh, store-bought donuts. Yep. (laughs) Maybe you can show us how to cook a frozen pizza next time. (laughs) Oh, wow. (laughs) Brutal. But did you see how good the stuff looked? Yeah. yeah. Oh, let's go through some of those pictures. Just I take mean, the, the hot butter not? donuts and then the donut masseau. I mean, yeah. come on. Epic. Once again, mm. once again, it's not about uh, building from the ground up. Yeah. If there are things out there that you can use that will speed up your cooking, but still make them delicious. Like, I don't have to make my own effing donuts to pull off. Yeah, they well, are. Right. <laughs> there they are. <laughs> Just store bought donuts waiting for me to use them. But I don't have to I don't have to make my own donuts to make the donut masseau. Picture here. Let's see how beautiful those freaking things were. <laughs> it was unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Yeah. That little mascarpone cream in there. So mascarpone is kinda like it's I is it the cheese that gets frequently used on like cheese danishes and things like that? Like, I feel like that I mixture so. that we yeah, made could yeah, have been yeah. used on a thing yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. Like cannolis, That's I think. That's cannoli, yeah. Yeah, right? cannoli is, it, okay. mascarpone is that. And mm-hmm. it's used in a lot of pastas, too. Mm-hmm. It's a great, it's a great, super rich uh, cream cheese, basically. Triple processed cream cheese. Oh, yeah. Is the way yeah. that I think I, anyway. I felt like I maybe backed myself into the corner, into a corner by saying, oh, well, I'll just use donuts for all of dessert week. <laughs> and of course, the, the donut masseau was a no-brainer. Uh-huh. And then the hot butter donuts, I did an emergency class event some time back, and they're like a no-brainer. But now I'm sitting here going, what the hell am I going to do with the rest, with another donut dish for the last day of dessert week? As Fixtures Living says on Twitter... You had us at hot buttered. Ah, <laughs> right. That's funny. Maybe we should just title all of our things like hot that. Butter. Hot buttered anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Well, next week is lunch week. Yes. Mm. And I'm starting like with uh, something that I haven't made for a while, but is so delicious. I can't believe I haven't made it for a while. This is for all you people out there doing the nine to five in the office. We're going to give you something better to bring. So yeah. go to Facebook. Yes, you could totally take this. Slash Sam the Cooking Guy and tell us what you guys want to see. We take suggestions. So I'm making today, though, I'm making a trifle. You know what a trifle is? No. It's like a layered thing. That's all right. I know, right? A trifle. Right. Let's see, There's Let's like, see a picture. Go, you go take a look at your pictures, and I'm going to try and recreate my own version. Mm-hmm. But I'm making a donut, a raspberry donut trifle. So the general components of a trifle wow. are... So, there you go. Some kind of um, like pudding-like thing. Mm-hmm. If you look back in those pictures, yeah. there will be a layer that's like a little bit yellow, and it's kind of like a pudding layer. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, I see. There's also a whipping cream layer that generally shows up on top. There Sometimes it it's only... There you go. There's your layers right there. Lots of berries. There's generally things. fruit. There's mm-hmm. generally berries of some kind mm-hmm. and uh, whipping cream and this vanilla pudding thing. And there's always cake. And it could be angel food cake, it could be pound cake, it could be leftover cake. We're doing it with donuts today because... It's donut it's week. donut dessert week. Mm. Let's see, a couple things off of, uh, off of the Facebook, if I can find this. Some comments. Diane Minnis-White, after uh, one of the shows last week, 
It started this week. Uh, Are you talking about the, like, the recent? Yeah. She writes, is Sam wearing his bathing suit again? <laughs> Just let me say, it's shorts, shorts. Diane Minnis White. <laughs> My wife would say it's a bathing suit exclusively. I believe it is both shorts <laughs> and... A bathing suit. I think it's just a little strange for somebody in Pennsylvania to imagine us wearing shorts in well, February. Right. Well, like, perhaps that's like what it is. But just let me say, eighty degrees last week. People. These shorts yeah. have not just pockets and a zipper, but they have <laughs> uh, a, a belt loops. What, what is that? Shorts. Wait, do they that's really shorts. have belt loops? They do. It's this. It's this I don't know material. If I, I think they're Hurley. Whose logo is that? Hurley. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like so they're H. Hurley shorts. <laughs> That have is that an H yeah. that they're making? Uh huh. Yeah, like that. So they're Hurley shorts <laughs> that can be used in the water that dry off super fast. They are a great bathing suit, but I like them as shorts. And too bad. Too bad for everybody. You maybe you just I guess have a shorts weird thing about shorts, and so you've gotten this one pair that you've worn forever. I like them. I, I'm not happy in shorts. I don't like myself in shorts. So when I find a pair that works, I'm going to stick with it. Even with those big buff calves, you don't even like with shorts? those big buff calves of mine. <laughs> He's got the weirdest <laughs> legs in the world. He's got like these extremely athletic, like Olympic sprinter legs that also no, just the calves. Coincidentally, don't just have hair. Calves. Yeah, the calves. Sorry, and then they also don't have any hair. So you have to get into that. Yeah. I don't, yeah, your hairless legs. Yeah, I have hairless it's not legs. Like we haven't gotten into it. Before. And by the way, just for anybody who's wondering, I'm not going to show them now. When we get into better weather, I might. <laughs> when I'm wearing shorts, I'm wearing jeans today. I've never shaved my legs. It's not like I was a swimmer and shaved all the hair off my body. We're not the Zion men are not hairy guys. We're not hairy people. Yeah, but all of my sons have hair on their legs. I have almost no hair on my legs. It's like I've shaved them, but I've not. It's like you got them lasered. I didn't get them lasered, man. <laughs> Are you sure you didn't get them How lasered? I didn't do any really neat, none of that, none uh. of that Aussie <laughs> stuff, whatever. <laughs> Alisa Hilliard writes, my three-year-old is in love with you, Sam. Oh, she asks, yeah. is there a new Sam today? We walked into Costco the other day and saw you. your show was on the TVs. She was upset. We didn't stand there and watch the whole thing. You should so have stood cute. there. It was only a minute. Hey, she had shopping to do. It's or, 60 or maybe seconds. She, maybe she was afraid you were going to start swearing. <laughs> yeah, oh God, she wow. was like, earmuff. Like, this is explicit. Like we can't have you listening to Costco this. doesn't like that. Uh, uh, Shannon Poulos writes, hey, Sam, sorry, Friday night. We had a great time. Made your spicy sausage pasta today. When she says she saw me Friday night, that means that she was at the class. Mm-hmm. And she wanted to recreate one of the things we made. I didn't have any whipping cream, so I used canned tomatoes and laughing cow cheese wedges for the sauce. Delish. Thanks for the inspiration. That's all I can ask for. I don't care if people make my food as long as I inspire them to make something. That makes me very, very People happy. do make them. Wendy Post made the pot, made the I know. Look at that. Or the shrimp and pork gyoza, which were so good. How good were they, right? Mm -hmm. They were really good. They were really, really good. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. Uh, my hot water tank in the garage broke this morning. We walked outside to it leaking. There's a plumber here. <laughs> He's actually on his way to get the tank. Turns out my tank was under warranty, which made me think, oh, great. I don't have to pay anything. <laughs> the tank is under warranty, not the work. <laughs> right. So I have to pay for all the disconnecting and then the reconnecting and all the extra plumbing stuff that he has to do. And I have to pay for them to take the old tank out and then take it away and dispose of it and blah, blah. It's still going to be like six, 700 bucks. Do we know what the <laughs> price of a new tank is? I think it's four or 500 about. Uh, so, yeah. so yes, I'm saving that. I'm the, saving the four or no, five hundred bucks. So, but the, this is what I said before. I said they're on. They're almost ensuring that they're going to uh, get more business by giving out the warranties. Wow. So, if a new one costs four hundred, they're making six hundred dollars, but it only costs them four hundred to replace it. So, yes, they have to pay the guy and stuff, but it but could wait, end up I'd making more money. If, for if them. I'd gone with the program of putting in a new tank and all of the fittings and all of the everything mm -hmm. as opposed to reusing what I've got, yeah. it would have been 1700 bucks with like a uh, five-year warranty or something like that. I mean, yeah. So whatever this warranty was, it expired, but there's a 90-day grace period that I'm in. <laughs> oh, wow. So wow. You got I mean, lucky. look, I'm happy I'm saving three, four, five hundred bucks. I don't know how much it is. How often do these water heaters collapse like this? 
I mean, I well, this like thing was in this thing was in frequent. since 2007, and that's a long time. Five but years, Matt, that years? lives up the street, yeah, said he had one go out in three years. Ooh. So, this faucet, something happened to my faucet. Yeah, I got to get it fixed. Do you um, do you remember there was a Sopranos episode where Tony needs to get a new um, water heater? Yeah. And it ruins everything for the FBI who had placed a bug down there. Oh, uh, because it was it was near it or something. Yeah, or? it was down in the basement, and so I the water heater that. blew, and then everything. Hey, you know what I watched planes. last night? I watched Casino. Great movie. Sharon Stone, Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro is so good in it. Joe Pesci. Joe so Pesci's good the best. It. He's the best. It's such a. How good about movie. that final scene? Him and his brother. Oh, oh my God. Ugh. <laughs> All right. Yesterday I went to Mexico. Nice. I went to Tijuana. Whoa. What'd you say? I went to Tijuana. Okay. I said it properly. It sounded like you threw an A in there. No, no, no. I don't say Tijuana because that's not right. <laughs> I went to Tijuana to have sushi with some people that were part of the Tijuana Innovadora event that I was at last November. Tijuana Innovation, I don't know, six, seven, eight hundred thousand people descended upon TJ for a week and a half it's worth of technology, innovation, entertainment, arts cooking, that kind of thing. And I was there for a couple events. And I was invited back to have lunch at a sushi place called Bodega Sushi Loft. So we pull up to the place. Here's the picture. Here's where we went. <laughs> wow. That's the sushi place? That's the sushi place. That's not your norm, not your average Nobu. <laughs> and I, went, I went, wait, where are we eating? And Leslie that I was with goes right there. Wait, there's their sign. And I go, right there? She goes, yeah, I go, that's like a house or something. It was like an industrial, there was some housing. And I go, really? She goes, yeah, it's not the same inside. Unfortunately, I don't actually have any pictures of the inside. And all they have for a sign is, this, is their number. But I'm telling you, it was some of the best sushi that I've had in a very long time. Really? And I've got a couple pictures of Ooh, them. Holy this crap. Is, this wow. is um, pulpo uh, ceviche, octopus ceviche. So you see here. Yeah, you can see the little suction cups. Right. But I'm telling you, this not just one of the most beautiful things I've seen in a long time. It was so freaking delicious. Mm -hmm. Right amount of spice, right amount of everything in this. Crazy good. So, um, That's beautiful. Salmon, that's apple on there. There's sake on this. A, a, like a salmon crudo, which generally it just means raw. I guess it's an Italian thing for raw. But... I could have eaten three plates of this. I could have eaten three plates of this. <laughs> it was so good. Mm -hmm. And then they brought this hamachi out. Ooh. And as if it wasn't good enough by itself, get off my computer for a second. Yeah. Let me show you what they do to it. I got this thing right here. Hold on. Oh, no problem. Are we, is it a video? Yeah. So Go ahead. Any, anytime you want. I got my sound up. Okay. I want you to listen. We're not going to be able to hear the sound, really. You're not going to? Well, if you lean, put your mic next to it. Okay, okay listen. Wait. <laughs> wow. Can we do that again? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Wait, so this is three types of oil. It's olive oil, sesame oil, and mesquite oil. Yeah. Super hot. It gets poured over top of this mm -hmm. and does this. Wow. That's so cool. So that's just cooking the sashimi, essentially. Exactly. And it doesn't cook it fully, and it's completely raw hamachi, mm -hmm. but it was unbelievably good. <laughs> unbelievably good. I could go back just for that. What is, is hamachi a specific um, Yeah. Yeah, hamachi fish? is... Uh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's not yeah, a yeah. fish. It is a fish. Oh, yes. Oh, a hamachi fish. Yes, hamachi. Oh, okay. I had no idea. I mean, is that... Uh, why have I never heard of that? Uh, hamachi is, um, uh, what kind of fish is it? Uh, why I'm trying to think of what it's, what it's, um, like a cousin to. It's not like a snapper. Uh, they call it like an amberjack or yellowtail. Oh, okay. Right. Japanese. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, obviously yeah. it's got a Japanese name. Right. Super delicious. Cool. Super. There you go. Right? Yeah. Really good. Um, but I'm telling you, the fact that they did that oil thing over the top of it, and maybe that's done other places. I've not had that before. I was really impressed. But I think the bigger, the bigger story, uh, apart from the fish, 
is that especially for those of us that live in San Diego, TJ is a really amazing place. And there's been terrible violence there over the past years. Mm -hmm. Terrible violence. Yeah, there's some comments about uh, your trip. Yeah, I know. People mm -hmm. were like, hey, hope you didn't get shot up and stuff like that. Well, and be careful. Like and some, no way on God's green earth will I do TJ. I have a blonde, blue-eyed girl, and, <laughs> I, and I would rather she wasn't kidnapped. Just saying. And then Lisa says, I would not trust TJ, and even more so, sushi and TJ. No. See, Ross says, rule number one, don't ever eat anything raw in Mexico. And then yeah. Alvaro just says racist. I mean, look, part, you know, part of this Tijuana Innovador event that I was at was mm -hmm. to help people understand what that region has to offer. Uh -huh. And in San Diego, from downtown San Diego, you're 15 minutes from the border, across the border, and you're in a, a region that is as closely tied to here, is we're more closely tied to what's going on in Tijuana, in San Diego, than we are to what's going on in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of cross-border traffic. There's a lot of cross-border work. There's a lot of cross-border uh, everything. And yes, it's gotten a bad rap. And yes, there's been a lot of ugliness down there. But that stuff is changing. And it takes people giving it an opportunity. Oh, yeah. You Some of the best food I've had in the past year or so has been in TJ. Something you need to realize is that the news in this country is very geared towards scaring you. Right. And True. that sells the border wars and the drug cartels mm -hmm. and heads and coolers being tossed over the border and border towns. Well, of course, it's that sells. So don't just believe everything that you see. No. And of course, that stuff is terrible. But but here's a here's a point that, you know, we discussed at lunch yesterday. Whether you like this or not. The Latin influence in the United States is significant. Oh, what, what per, significant. 50% of our population of California is Hispanic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, by like, 2020 and 2040. It's going to be more. So here's the deal. Texas is about to become a blue state. Not a blue state, a purple state because of a huge influx right. in so look, Latino it's population. It's like this. We live on a street. I don't know how many houses there are on this street. I mean, maybe 40, right? Mm -hmm. It's like a new neighbor moves into a house across the street. And nobody wants to deal with them for whatever reason. They're just people that somebody doesn't think that they want to get to know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here's the reality of the situation. Those neighbors now live in that house and they're not going anywhere. Right. You can say what you want about the Hispanic population. Being a bad thing if you don't like it, being an uncomfortable thing, whatever it is. But it's now part of who we are. You have to come to the point where you say, let's embrace. I think you have to say that. Because if you don't, you're just going to make yourself miserable. It's like being in Vancouver and not liking Chinese people. Chinese make up a significant percentage of the population up there. Like Hispanics make a big percentage of the population here. Cross the border is all kinds of really great stuff. And I think it's, a, I think it's time they had a chance. And I think we have to give them a chance here. We got to go over there more. If, if we could have a relationship with T Tijuana, kind of like... Seattle and Vancouver have right. Uh, that would be hugely significant to. And yes, there's not negative just the comments of the city, these, but the the right. Look, there's negative comments mm -hmm. that people write, but there are plenty of people that also wrote after I posted that stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Maybe I need to give TJ another chance. I didn't know. That's all <laughs> yeah. I'm asking for. Mike, give it another chance. One, yeah, yeah. Mike just says some of you guys should get out more. <laughs> That's exactly just because right. you're a scaredy cat doesn't mean everyone else should be. <laughs> right. 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 That's true. Look at if you you could go into a theater in Denver and get killed, it can happen here, it could happen everywhere. Yeah. Violence is violence. It's gonna happen. You can't let that rule your life. Do these guys look scary? No, they don't. <laughs> they don't. Look at them. So the guy with the hat to my left mm -hmm. and then two over to my right are the two brothers that uh that uh, have the bodega sushi loft. Really mm -hmm. great guys. Cool. Really great guys, great food, cool inside, doesn't look anything like the outside. But they're intentionally keeping it like a mystery like that. Yeah. They're not going to do the sign and the awning and all that stuff anyway. I got to cook something. You do, you do. I got to cook something. Uh, we talk about Fixtures Living all the time. They're a great sponsor of the show. We uh, love having them here. Mm -hmm. Fixtureslivingcom and you go to them on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Fixtures Living. Mm -hmm. They're in San Diego, Costa Mesa, and Rancho Mirage, soon to be in Glendale and soon to open a brand new place here in San Diego at University Town Center. Kitchen, bath, outdoor, joy. That's what they do. Say the line. 
<laughs> Does this look like an appliance store? There you go. Is that the line? <laughs> go to the Facebook and love them. I guess you can't love them. Maybe, Maybe they there should, should be different that. levels. <laughs> right. go I kind of like, like, like this. Go there and at least like them. Okay, I want to make this donut trifle. Ready? We're ready. ready. Let's go. All right. So first things first, um, like I'm in favor of shortcuts. In fact, the pudding that we're using for this, instead of making my own vanilla pudding, <laughs> ah, Jello, instant pudding. But what I won't use is whipping cream that comes out of one of those things, because that's just dumb. So I'm going to make my own whipping cream. So I need to do this. I could have done this beforehand, probably, and, and saved all of this noise. So when you make whipping cream, the standard issue way to make it is this. The heavy cream goes into a mixer. You add sugar and you add vanilla, and that gives you, that gives you a nice, beautiful little everyday whipping cream. But because we're making a raspberry donut trifle, I want to add a little raspberry flavor. So instead of adding cream, sorry, sugar and vanilla, I'm going to add a little Chambord. And Chambord is just raspberry liqueur. So it's going to add the sweet that the sugar would add. Just a little hint of color, but definitely some really nice flavor. So just a little bit of this. If you put too much in, uh, you know, it starts to become difficult for this to come together. Sorry. There you go. And I hope you do know that you can whip cream too far. Did you know that, Matt? It will break. <laughs> and it actually sort of starts to go like in a butter direction, which is what you don't want. Okay. So that's going to do its thing. I've got donut here. And the donut, I don't really have to do anything special with. I mean, I could just break it up into pieces. Like this. So I've got donut. I've got the cream. I've got the pudding. I've got raspberries here. Oh, and I wanted this. Raspberry jam, just a little extra. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, this glass or this glass? Mm, this? I vote the this. other one. Allie yeah. votes yeah. for this. Max votes for this. <laughs> Oh, no, for that one. This? The pretty one. The pretty one. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to actually cover that up because it seems like it's spraying a little bit. So is this enough for a trifle for one? Is that what's happening? This will be like trifle for one. Cool. And then, yeah. So, all right, let's do this. There's no right or wrong way to do this. It's just whatever you think is going to be pretty. So the jam, I want a little bit looser, so I'm just going to mix it so it goes in here OK. Like, like one more minute, and that'll be ready. We'll start with a little of that on the bottom. Nope. <laughs> I could have made whipping cream beforehand, right? <laughs> right? Maybe I should have made whipping cream beforehand.
So a little of this. And when you do it, you want to be able to see the color in the side. There's no point in just having it be right in the middle. Because you're going to cover it up. Okay, that's done. God, that was really noisy, man. So let's put some cake in here now. And right, obviously, if you don't have donuts, you could make this with almost anything. Oh, I'm digging this. This is good. This is good. We're doing good work here. Let's try a little, a little of the whipping cream in here. This layer. You can't really see, you're not really going to notice the color, but it's definitely got a little bit extra to it because of the Chambord. Hey. We'll throw some raspberries in here. Can you pull it? Like oh, yeah. How about you move? Yeah, I know somebody's probably bitching about the fact that I haven't made my own pudding for this. And it, it, it's too bad, though. <laughs> they can go cry all they want. Let's do another layer of the cake or the donut or whatever you're using. Which, by the way, when it comes to donuts, it's funny, I've used donuts for all the things this week. I'm not a huge donut fan, but when I do, this is what I like. I like plain cake donuts. Mm. That's my thing. Oh yeah. So I've got this, I've got this, I've got this. I suppose we're probably nearing what could be the top of this thing. So more whipping cream here. All the way around, right? Oh my God. I feel like, like Food Michelangelo here. <laughs> and then this. Just a few more berries on top. How pretty is that? Who am I? And then, you know, I need one, one last little dusting coating of... this on top. There you go. What do we call that? We call that Donut Trifle, and that's going to end Donut Dessert Week on the Sam Livecast. I'm really happy with that. You happy with that, Max? Oh, yeah. Who doesn't like that? You've got pudding, you've got the cake, you've got raspberry jam in there. I should have put one more layer of raspberry jam up on top. And now I'm going to have a bite. The one that we make for the camera will have that extra layer. So you want to go down, you want to get some cake, you want to get some raspberry, a little bit of everything. Oh my God. Okay, you know what? You can make your own cake, you can make your own pudding, you can make your own glassware if you want. But I'm telling you, as beautiful as this is, it's simple too and it's super delicious. And this is what the live cast is all about. Simple. Great tasting. Big in taste, small in effort. That's what I say. Thanks for hanging out with us today. It's been fun. Lunch week. Next week, I'm making one of my old-time favorite things that I haven't made for a while to start with. I think I'm going to like it, and I hope you like it too. Thanks for hanging out with us. Tell your friends about us. Support the show. See ya.